hello hello um i guess you can call this a p-log i don't know yeah I, i'll call it a p-log um i was about to go live on instagram to talk about this thing called side to side might be some sort of series don't really know yet but basically um i can't do that until i've talked about how i got there <laughs> Just because it's a habit and um, I I don't feel like journaling it. <laughs> so anyways, today's Friday. It's June 10th. Um, I was going to fast. Um, I am still fasting. But um, I was going to do Bible reading for the fast today. But before that happened, I was washing the dishes. So I went to wash dishes and I was thinking, you know. And what we're fasting and praying for is for our nation, the U.S. of A. And my opinion on that is is push, right? Pray until something happens. That term, by the way, I've known about it, but my dad brought it up again. And I'm seeing it with a new light, and that's what I'm about to share right now. Um, praying and fasting is not for the sake of wishing. It is to push, and God will do something. Um, the only thing is that what is happening is in the heart. You know, the movement is in the heart. The thing that will happen is in the heart. Whatever happens to people in America, it's in the heart. Um, not legislation, no. <laughs> so anyways, um, I was like, okay, so then... What am I going to be praying for? You know, what am I going to be fasting for if I already know about push, right? Because at first I was like, you know what? Dad already gave me my sermon for fasting, which is push. And if we're going to pray until something happens in everyone's heart, as God is supposed to move everyone's heart, and um, as, you know, in, their, in his own way, in their own time, um, his timing for them, not that they choose, you know what I mean? Um then what am I praying for? And, um, but like really, like backtrack, pray for healing the land. The land is each person, you know. Uh, there's going to be a new heaven, new earth. We're not going to take America with us to heaven. So anyways, I was like, God, what am I supposed to be praying for? If I already know this, what am I supposed to be praying for? Um, and I was just beginning to think. And, um, one of the things I thought about was how if America really became a Christian nation, we would be the biggest monastery in the world where we isolate ourselves from non-Christians. And um, at, what, at that point, how are we helping the world, an unsaved, a dying world, um, from their sin if we're just this Christian nation basically becoming an Islamic state, but in the name of Jesus? And we all know how scary that is. Um, and that was the thought. Um, and from there, I was reminded exactly. We're not supposed to be that way. Um, if anything, we're supposed to be Second Corinthians chapter 2. I already took my Bible downstairs, so I'll be reading from the King James. But in Second Corinthians... Two. Corinthians is an awesome book. Okay, that's Romans. Colossians. Okay, but yeah, in 2 Corinthians, which, by the way, one of my favorite verses because it is one of the most convicting. <laughs> and God knows I love the conviction. <laughs> but this is one of my favorite verses just because it is so, like, so, you know, convicting. And I, I like being convicted. I like getting my heart cut up. She's a tear in my heart. Bible. Holy Spirit. God. Um, with all that being thing, he, I love this verse. Um, so it is from 2 Corinthians 2. I'm going to try and find it. Let me just read the whole chapter. There ain't nothing wrong with reading the whole thing. Okay. But determined... But I determined this with myself. Sorry, it's King James Version. I know I didn't read any King James stuff yet, but it's coming, and I'm sorry. 
that I would not come again to you in heaviness. For if I make you sorry, who is he then that maketh me glad? But the same which is made sorry by me. This is about a drama. I don't even know what's going on. And I wrote this same unto you, lest when I come I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice, having confidence in you all, that my joy is the joy of you all. I kind of know how he's feeling. Mm. Um, verse 4. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, not that ye should be grieved, but that ye might know the love which I have for you more abundantly unto you. Okay, maybe I don't understand what's going on. Um, for out of the affliction and anguish of, of heart, I wrote unto you, I'm rereading, verse 5, <laughs> But if any of you have caused grief, he hath not grieved me, but in part that I may not overcharge you all. Sufficient is sufficient to such a man is this punishment, which is inflicted of many. So that contrary wise, ye ought to rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest he, perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Wherefore, I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him. It's funny how this is underlined. I wonder why it was underlined. <laughs> um, not by me, by the way. Anyways, for to this end also I did, did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgive it, for your sake, um, for your sakes forgave I it in the name, in the person of Christ, lest Satan should take advantage of us. Christians, hey, hey. Um, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Yeah, we better not be. Yet what's happening in the church? Division, division. Anyways. Verse 12. Furthermore, when I come to Tro Troas to, pre uh, to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was open unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit, because I found not Titus my brother, but taking my leave of them, I went from thence to Macedonia. Now thanks be to God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of knowledge uh, by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one, we are a savor of death unto death. And to the other, we are a savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? That's basically what I wanted to share, but let's finish it up. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of, of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, uh, speak we in Christ. And this is chapter 3. Um which I'm going to read on because it's like the same topic. I'm going to read up to verse 5. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as as some others, epistles of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Ye are the epistle written in our hearts, known and read to all men, of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables, in tablets, well, it says tables here, but in tablets of stone, but in fleshy tablets of the heart. And such trusts have we through Christ to God, um, to Godward. Mm. Godward is heavenward, because God is heaven. Literally being in heaven is being with God. You can't separate the two. Um, verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of us, but our sufficiency is of God. 
boom and that's it so the reason i wanted to read all that is because i was trying to find that verse which is verse 15 and verse 16 which is a, a verse that convicted me a long time ago um several times but there was a time that i realized that um i have a stinky smell i'm not a sweet smelling smell um the way i captioned it and i remember because it was really funny i said um currently a bedside nurse with uh, currently a nurse with stinky bedside manners, something like that. And I was basically referring to, sorry, I'm spitting. I was basically referring to that verse because as a, as a nurse, you could be a nurse nursing someone to health, but you could also be a nurse that works in hospice, which is nursing someone to their death. And it's unfortunate, but you are there to be a sweet person, you know? And, um, as Christians, we're supposed to do that. You know, we're supposed to be present and a sweet smelling savor uh because it is one that is to christ it is one to god but um it is a smell that can be to some life as a nurse does right nursing someone to health but she can also be someone who nurses someone to death because they don't they end up not choosing it and that's what happens that's life you know um it's unfortunate but everyone has their own decisions to make anyways that verse has always been convicting to me and how does that connect to everything that we're saying? So, here's the situation. How can we expect the kingdom of God to come if we think if we put a dome over our our Christianity, a dome over our faith that those who are not of the faith should not enter, that those who are not of the faith can't be in this country unless they abide by our rules. We are putting a dome. We're not helping them. God the kingdom of God, it says in Luke that the kingdom of God is in every one, is in every one of you. Like, um, and that's to say that it's in the heart, like the heart has to change. That's, that's where the kingdom of God comes, not because of behavior. That's why Christianity is far from behavior modification, yet it's become that because of the church idolizing itself. And it's very sad. And it's, just, it's been this invisible sin, I think, that has gone through millennia, um, uh, millennia. I'm using the word by Emmy made in Japan. But um, it's this invisible sin because it's pride mixed with holy and piousness and all these things that Christians are totally missing, that they're a, di a device of the enemy at this point. Um, we've lacked awareness. And it's because of not reading, reading the Bible. It's because of not praying. It's all this tradition that we've been trying to keep up with instead of letting the heart be transformed every day. So anyways... That verse came to mind as a reason for why we should not become a big monastery of a nation. Even, um, like, because remember, Paul and Barnabas, they would go out to places uh, where there's dialogue. Um, they wouldn't just stay amongst themselves. And that's something that we have left as Christians. I don't understand. I really don't get it. Um, but anyways, there's that verse that comes, right? But what's been happening this week is I've been given another verse totally. And, um, if you've seen the screen recording that I posted, you would know what I'm talking about. Um, if you haven't, it's nothing against you. It's just, it's a private conversation, but I can't like censor the word, the name, the username or the picture. So it is what it is. But in, in that conversation, a very, famous verse came up and I'm going to see if I can find it. I'm not going to even try. It's in Ephesians. Um, and I can't look it up because I'm recording on my phone, but it's in Ephesians and it says to basically stay away from the deeds of the darkness or something like that, which yes, that's correct. But again, these are verses sent to the church, not to the world. You know, this word wasn't given to Paul that, okay, guys, uh, bad company corrupts good morals. Don't talk to them. Okay, but why was Jesus with sinners? Like, we need to understand the Bible, but I'm not going to get worked up about that. But anyways, now we've arrived to what I was going to post on Instagram, which is seeing the verse of staying away from deeds of darkness right next to the verse of um, that we are a sweet-smelling savor to those who are perishing and to those who live. Um, and why is that? Why do those two verses exist? in the same Bible. Okay. So that's what I'm going to be exploring. Um, not really that, but just an introduction to a series, because I think there's going to be a lot of these, um, as, uh, I read the Bible and as I share it with people, 
that they may understand that the Bible is for everyone. It is not just for the Christians who already know God. It is for everyone. Um, of course, you won't understand much until you open your heart to God. But the first thing first is be saved. And that's what the Bible is going to give you at that point. Um, from there will be sanctification until glorification. But um, And yeah, you'll find metaphysical things in here. But you can't say the same Bible that is for salvation, sanctification, and glorification is going to happen. It's supposed to happen to the world, as the as the church. And if you're of the church and you're in the process of being sanctified, then also the uh, the world needs to be sanctified. It's like no. And then another one was someone was using um, John seventeen, a prayer by Jesus to God, talking about us, the believers. Okay, he's not talking about the world at this point. But he was saying that, um, I'm trying to remember the verse, but I'll look it up because it's literally in John 17 and that is not that hard to look up. Here we go. Oh, it's something about being sanctified by truth and your word. That's what the verse was. If I find it, I find it. Oh, it's in 1717. I should have known because I was like, 1717, almost like 1111, but I was not sure. So it says it here. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now this is true. Everyone can be sanctified by truth. Christians need to be sanctified by truth. But we can't expect, again, to save people by sanctifying them. That is us playing God. And I really hate it. I hate it that the church is what it is right now. It's very frustrating. But we need to have that eye-opening experience. I guess it's going to happen through conversations with the Bible. And that's what side to side's going to be. Or side by side's going to be with Ariana, Nicki Minaj. You know what I mean? I'm going to have that playing in the background for the life. So anyways, I'm talking fast because this phone, I don't know how much storage is left. But I got to cut it off. So yeah, thanks for watching. Sorry for being so short. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Instagram, epicompery, double I.